Hello and welcome to the show. Glad you joined me again this week. We're still working on this colt and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come through session two. We had a storm hit us a couple hours ago, so we jerked all our tack down, put the filming equipment away, turned this colt loose after our, la after our first ride. So now he's had a couple hours off and I'm gonna come back and show you exactly how I would start session two. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. So where we want to start today is to go back over what we've already done. So I'm just take my lead rope and just kind of send him off. Just remind him. He's just standing here quiet and peaceful saying, gee, Ken, what did I do wrong? Nothing. You didn't do anything wrong. You just need to move your feet around and remember, oh, right there. Bring that inside turn. There we go. Remember that I can control you by moving your feet. That's all that's important. Drive that hindquarters around. Push him up there. And right there, there's that inside turn. Push him back around here. Step away, bring that front end. There we go. That's what I want to see. Come back, see if I can pull that front end to me a little more. Good, right there. That's enough. That's a reminder that I am the leader in the relationship. Come up here and pet on him. He's not wild and unruly. He's a nice colt. Don't reinvent the wheel, right? My dad used to say all the time, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's a lot of colt starting. Don't have to fix something. You know, leave enough of the horse in there that he feels comfortable with himself. Now, I'm not just gonna throw my saddle on him. We're gonna go back and work a little bit. Take my pad. right here and approach and retreat up and down his nose a little bit. Up over his neck and he says, no way. Not gonna do that, Ken. It's all right, just take it down. Don't, don't let him get worried. And don't let his worry affect you, right? Have you ever seen that happen? You see one person get worried and then even though they don't necessarily know what they're worried about, Pretty soon everybody's worried. Don't let him get worried. Just stay nice and calm. Right? He's kind of flinching and checking here, so we're just gonna work with that pad a little bit more. There we go. Throw it on up there. There we go. Can you imagine you're on an airplane, you're flying cross country, and all of a sudden the pilot comes on and he says, ladies and gentlemen, um, I thought I need to alert you. I'm a little bit worried. The mechanical condition of this plane seems to be failing. What would that do to you? That would scare me bad. There's nothing you can do with it. You're out of control. That's what's happening with your young horse when you get nervous. You get nervous, you're sending through to him messages that tell him you're nervous and you're the leader, so he should be petrified, right? Think about that when you're working him. It's okay to be aware that things can go bad. It's okay to be afraid of getting hurt, but don't let it control what you're doing. Because if it does, pretty shortly, it's gonna bring about pure panic for him. Boy. Set it right up on there, exactly like you did in the last session. Here, all right, fella. I'd like to take a minute and check my cinch. All right, I've been using this felt cinch by Weaver. 
here lately and I really have kind of been enjoying it. But because it's felt, things stick to it a little easier than they do the neoprene or the uh, rubber. So just make sure that everything is the way you want it to be. Saddle him like you would a broke horse. Take care of him. Take a little time. Pull that cinch up a couple of times. There we are. Pull it up, let it back down. Pull it up, let it back down. I've got that lead rope just draped over my wrist, so if he needs to take off, he can, and I can grab it if I need to. All right, don't, don't let it get wrapped around you. Don't get yourself in a wreck. Be aware all the time. Pull that cinch tight, buckle it, so it's nice and safe. Reach under here, pick up that back cinch. Now, he bucked pretty good in the last session. I don't like cold bucked horses. In fact, I will tell you, I believe this with all of my heart. Cold backed horses are made with too much groundwork and not enough actual education. So. I'm not just gonna turn him loose and let him run around. Now I'm gonna actually work him with the halter and lead rope just a little bit and see if we can kind of keep him from bucking in this session. Whoa, right there, I'm gonna take a hold of him. You see, hey, you can kind of see he was getting ready for it. And we almost had him stop right, right there. Bring him to a stop right here. He needs to know I don't like this business. Right there, we're gonna stop him. Come on, move your feet right there. We're going to stop him. Move your feet right there. Right there. We're not going to have that. My horse has to know that's not acceptable. First time around, I'm okay with it. Things happen. Second time around, we're on our way to building the habit. I'm not going to have that. So I've got to change it. So when I first sent him off, he hurried and I tried to get him shut down. Thought I had it. And then five seconds or I don't know, two seconds into the stop, he jumps and starts bucking. Stay after him until you have control over it. Then don't be mad, don't be scared. Just understand he's a baby who did baby things. It's not a big deal, forgive him. So even though he just bucked and jumped around, once I showed him that that was a bad idea, he relaxed. Let's push him off to a lope. And then pick my hand up just like I'm in the saddle. Bring that nose down. Nice and soft. Just a little bit different than what we did last time. Adding a little more education. No. Nope. Go the other way. Drive him up to a lope. Then just pick my hand up nice and soft. Bring that hind end around. Drive him back the other way. Pick my hand up. Right there. Let him think his way through that. Look at him just licking and chewing, dropping his head, relaxing, staying quiet. That's what I like to see. We're ready to go on. So on our first ride, I just rode him around in the halter I made into a hackamore. But this time, I want to go ahead and start moving towards the snaffle. I like to use the snaffle bit. It doesn't offend me if you don't, but I like to use it because I start getting my horse a little more uh, consistently broke. In other words, it's what other people are going to do when they ride him when he's a five-year-old. You're going to have to go put a bit in his mouth someday. So right here, I just wanna, when that happens, that's life. Don't worry about it. It's scaring him. There we go. Just take a moment to let him get over it. It's not a big deal. And bridle him like any old broke horse.
right there. You've dewormed him his whole life. You've paid attention, you've petted on him. Bridling him that first time shouldn't be a real big deal. It should be just like everything else you've done. Take it in stride and go with it. Now, I like my bridles to stay loose, but when I'm talking about colt starting, I'm gonna move that snaffle up pretty snug, and here's why. I don't want my horse to be able to get his tongue over the bit and get a bad habit. So I wanna actually get that snaffle kind of tight up in there, just so that we're safe from bad habits for the very first time. Now, he doesn't, he's never been led with a bridle on before. So just to walk off with this bridle and think he's gonna lead would be a real mistake, but I'd like to get him out away from that wall. So use the groundwork you've been teaching him to get him to come out. He's led before, just not with a bit in his mouth. So just pay a little attention, don't just walk off. Now remember the bending that we did with the halter? Same thing, I come back here, I take a hold of the saddle horn <clears throat> and I hold that rein and I wait. And he's learned how to give to pressure, but he's never had this pressure. So wait, wait. Right here he says, Ken, I don't know about this. Just wait. And I don't want just a bend, I want flex in his neck as well. Okay, and wait. All that fussing, just ride through it, right? Just stay with him, wait. When he softens that nose and brings it back towards his chest and flexes in the pole, we'll release him. Kind of shake that saddle, keep him awake. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a tiny bit more pressure. I pull about a half inch more rein right there through my hand, then release him, nothing more. Pick up on it, do it right away again. Ask for him to get soft. Bring that nose over. Right there. Release him. Now I'm gonna do it one more time. There he is, and focus. Drive his hindquarters around. Perfect. That was the left. Let's try the right. Bring his nose over here, soften, wait. Wait for that nose to come off center, right there. He moved and gave me his hip that time, I'm gonna take it. It was a free gift. He softened, flexed, and moved his hip, so I'm gonna drop it and walk away. A big part of keeping your horse soft is recognizing when he does something right and letting him know. Soften that nose. He's leaning against me, chewing that bit, wait. Now he didn't soften this time, so just stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Right there. You can tell when your horse is soft when you release them and their head doesn't fly out, it just goes out quietly. Wait on him. Waiting on him. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of pressure because he's just kind of sleeping on the bit right there. Good. He released. I'll just step away from him and do it again. Wait on him to get soft. Move 
his hind feet over. Good. Come back around here. You see his head up and his eyes tight and his ears pinned back? He's not ready for me to step on. He's nervous about this bit. Soften that nose. Move those feet. Perfect. Soften that nose. Move those feet. He's all back up here. We're not getting that inside hind leg to go forward. There. If he's just running backwards, then there's no reason to release him because he's not disconnecting his hind end. You're actually making the problem worse, not better. There we go. Good boy. How much of this is too much? You can't do too much, right? You can do this as long as you want, as long as you always get a major muscle group to move. So in other words, when I bend him, I don't just release his nose. When I pick up on this rein and I bend him, wait for softness. When I get softness, move the hindquarters and then release. Right? That way he's learning constantly. I'll come back here. Take it a step further than we did yesterday. Always shortening the process a little bit, right? Yesterday we just put our foot in the stirrup and then walked away. Today we put our foot in the stirrup, step up, step down, walk away. Don't forget what you do on one side you really want to do on the other. Right there, if he moves, stay relaxed. Follow your gut. There we go. Just like last session, just like the last ride, which was actually not yesterday, but earlier today, Get on, rub on him, pet on him. Step off and walk away, okay? He's coming along good. You like where he's at. Come back. I think this is one of the pieces that concerns people more than anything else. How do I get on after day one? I've gone to the clinics, I've watched the demonstrations at expos, everybody shows me how to do the first ride, what's ride two look like? Just like ride one, it just takes less time. Keep that nose soft, move that hind end, there we go, good boy. I'm a passenger and a guest, don't start moving the furniture around, all right? Don't start throwing furniture around. There we go. I kissed to him, encouraged him to walk a little more. There we go. Soften that rein. Soften that nose. Soften that nose. There we go. Good. Encourage him to move out a little more. There we go. I kissed to him. 
Stay real loose. If he's gonna spook, let him spook. If you jerk, get scared and grab the reins, you're gonna make the problem worse. Just encourage him to move around. We're really traveling out, doing really good. I like what's going on. He's doing really nice. I'd love to have time to trot him or lope him or, you know what? I got a really nice walk going right here. Rock that saddle, step off of him, and just keep progressing him every step exactly like you did the last one. One of the questions that I frequently get asked is, well, if you're not using your legs on day one and day two, when do you start to use them? Well, when I get my horse to where he's comfortably moving forward and walking out on his own, when I kiss to him and bend him a little bit, and I know he's gonna move, then right when I know he's gonna move, I'll start bumping him with an inside leg. And then I'll add both legs. So day two, day three, day four, anywhere in there is a good time to start adding your legs. Just remember, don't start kicking and whacking because he doesn't know what they mean. Go one slow step at a time and he'll get there. Thanks so much for joining us again this week. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to